we're beginning to learn about genetic causes of diabetes, but the majority of people in the United States who are diabetic today are related to behavior that we know we can change through lifestyle changes. Diabetes as an epidemic is, has been well documented by national studies, some sponsored by the National Institutes of Health, the Centers for Disease Control, and other global organizations. And we think of it as an epidemic because the number of people who have diabetes and prediabetes continues to grow. I became attracted to this field of study about seven years ago when I was trying to think of new interventions that might help persons with chronic diseases, particularly diabetes. My father, uh, 88 years old, was diabetic and he did a great job of testing his blood glucose, his blood sugar every day, but he really didn't have a good idea of what those numbers meant. And so it seemed to me a, a great opportunity to think about ways that people could use technologies to communicate either with a physician, a provider, a nurse practitioner, when they were collecting information about monitoring their disease, but also to use the tools as a way to give feedback on the results of what those uh, blood glucoses or other monitoring types of information might mean. There are thousands of applications calling themselves mobile health, but very few of those applications actually have science behind them documenting whether or not there's evidence that they actually work. As technologies go, they were pretty much, um, let's try it and see if it works and s start selling it. So we were very intent on developing a good scientific approach to mobile diabetes management. And we hope that the way we did the study can be somewhat of a model replicated by others for other diseases. We know a lot more today about mobile devices that are based on mobile phones. And that's been very popular just because mobile phones are ubiquitous. Everyone has a mobile phone. Um, it's, it's fast growing among all populations. So there are a number of interventions that are being developed on mobile phones. There are also revisions being made to existing mobile devices. So in diabetes, people are recommended to test their blood glucose with a meter. Those meters are being changed such that they not only test blood glucose, but they also communicate those results to a provider or to a web portal. There are also, when we think of mobile health, we need to think of devices that are based more on sensor equipment. There are um, companies that are developing wearable shirts that can actually sense the biomechanical uh, outcomes of um, what we eat, um, what our temperature is, our blood glucose level, et cetera, and collect that data and then send it to web portals, other devices and systems that we think of as mobile. So the, the, we're really at just the beginning stage of mobile health and mobile health as a science. We have to bring together multiple disciplines in order to address these issues, and that can only happen if the uh, mission of an agency such as the Office of Behavioral and Social Sciences is able to bring these issues to the forefront, bringing together information technology, nanosensors, uh, people who are able to build things, engineers. So there are multiple disciplines that need to come together and, and um, help us figure out what in mobile health works. Our study was focused on um, a particular clinical outcome. We focused on change in blood glucose. And what's important and relates to the Office of Behavioral and Social Sciences is not just what are the results based on a clinical outcome, but what are the behaviors attached to that clinical outcome. So that's, that's where our study is just a beginning. It's just a first study. We really need to think through not only uh, data and numbers, but what behaviors using mobile health or mobile technologies most encourages people to change their behavior, improve their health, and ideally improve the health of a population.